students going to schools with no shoes on their feet. I will take you to places in Nigeria where you have mansions on water. What kind of religion do people uh, practice in Africa, if you're open to talk about it? My mom used to be a Muslim, but then okay. she converted to Christianity. Okay. And then we are also Christian. And how did that go? If I had a son called Onrumila, I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. Please don't quote no, me. No, okay, okay. I just but then I know Onrumila came the god of, we've got the god of thunder, okay. which we call Shongo. Shongo? Okay. Yeah. This is the one of the downsides of uh, history because and you were occupied dead. by who the british the british fuel uh -huh. fuel prices skyrocketed and yeah prices of things going up because of the fuel since you got married to a vietnamese woman right tell us uh, good tips if somebody wants to date a vietnamese girl Ram Ram G, Kiala Char. Bro, what you doing? Didn't you say we're about to start the podcast? Yeah. So I'm just I... opening. What do you mean? Do they even know you? Yeah, they speak the language. They know me. We're what? one. <laughs> yeah, but you've never been introduced to them. All right. So let me do the introduction. Okay. Let's 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 just start over again. All right. Let's start over again. Ram Ram G. Ram Ram Ji. Kya hal chal? Kya hal chal? Kaise ho aap log? Kaise ho aap log? Hmm. Haan bhai. Namaskar Devi aur Sajro. Kya hal chal? Bhai ne, actually, humne kaafi pehle ye baat hui thi ki hum log na milke ek podcast se start karenge. Right. So, he was the guy to just uh, tell me that, Raj, why don't you start a podcast and we can talk about something. And I was like, ye kya hi baat karenge? So, uh, today is our first uh, podcast. Podcast, yeah. Thank you all. Welcome. And this is Ayo. 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 I'm from uh, Nigeria. Nigeria. My full my full name is actually longer than that, though. You what wanna is that? hear it? I know Ayo Tundeol Uada Milari. That's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Again. I know. That's my last name. I I know. Ayo Tunde. Ayo Tunde. Oluada Milari. Odu. Wa. Wa. Da. Da. Mi. Mi. La. La. Re. Day. You got it, bro. Okay. But still, I can't say the entire thing. I again, know, bro. I know. It takes, it takes <laughs> I'm getting used to. Okay. So, my friend, Ayo. Yep. Ayo is living in Vietnam. Right. Same city. I've been in Vietnam for, I mean, since 2017. 2017? Right. Joy, joy. 2017. That's, uh, that's a long time. It is, isn't it? It yeah. is, it is. Oh, but I'm loving it here. It's chill. Seven, seven years now? Seven, yes. Seven years. Seven. September should make it seven. Oh, wow. And tell me what, you, what you've been doing. Is it like you, you just came in here? Or? No, I came here on a scholarship to study uh -huh. a master's in aquaculture. Aquaculture? Yeah. So you got like marine thing and stuff like that? Yeah, both uh, marine and fresh water. Oh, okay. Animals, yeah. Is it like a big thing in Vietnam to learn? Yes, yes it is. It's actually growing. Growing. The industry is growing. I think Vietnam is third. Mm -hmm. Just, I think India should be second or first. I ain't sure about that. But I know, I know. India, and, India and Vietnam, they are in top five. India is like uh, the number one populated country in the world now. Yeah, Nigeria is uh, just very close to it. <laughs> <laughs> Nigeria is getting there, very close to it. I will tell you what, my grandfather had uh, six wives. Six wives? 36 children. I'm not even joking. And, and this is the thing, he died at the age of 96. So he lived a long, good life. Che, che Vivian and 36 kids. Yeah, right. Chaptis Bache. And they all live together? No, no, they don't. So not in the one city or not in one place or different cities? While they were still young, yeah, they lived together, but my dad they they went apart. I mean my dad left uh, when he was like early twenties, started and his own life. He left you know. with your mom. Uh, I mean like your, your He left, then he got uh, married to my mom. His his mom, sorry. No, his mom his mom was still with him. So he just left like he's going to look for, to make a life of his own. Okay, so he left alone. Right. Okay. And so some of his brothers too. So where, where, okay, tell me where, where do you exactly come from in, uh, in so my, Nigeria? So my mom, my dad is from Oshun, 
Oshun. It's a state, yeah, a state in, in Nigeria, Oshun. And what kind of state it is, like if you can give me a geographical idea, landscapes? I know Nigeria and most of Africa is rugged. Yeah, so it's, 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 in like... the, it's in the west though, it's in the west, it's in the southwest. Uh -huh. it's, um... And what neighboring countries do you have? You have like, uh, I think, Kenya next door. Neighboring countries or states? Uh -huh. Neighboring countries? Countries, we've got Niger, Chad, Ghana, Cameroon. Uh -huh. That's Nigeria, right? Okay. Oh, okay. So you're uh, Cameroon and then near Cameroon, I think it's, it's towards Morocco? That's in the, Morocco is in the north, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> I should have paid more attention <laughs> in geography. Geography, <laughs> right, right. Okay. Well, you got a map though here. Yes, I do. I have okay. a, nice. an African map. Can I, can I just probably... All right, I will take it. No, uh, let me just zoom, zoom it in. in. It's here, yeah, can you see? Oh, nice. It's a map nice. of Africa. That's a map of so Africa. So, you I got... Can't, uh, I can't focus. Uh, just give me a sec. All right. You got Nigeria. I think I did manual yeah. focus. Okay. Okay, so take, take two. Yes. So, yeah. You so, got a map of Africa here. And at this point, let me just take a close up. All right, that's it. And here you've got Nigeria. Uh huh. And yeah, neighboring countries, you've got Ghana, you've got Niger up here, you've got Chad here. Uh huh. Uh, so that's it. And then Morocco that you're talking about should be this is the north. Uh -huh. So you've got Egypt and all the northern countries here. Uh -huh. You've got South Africa here, uh -huh. you've got, uh, this is the east, so you've got Tanzania, Tanzania Kenya, Kenya, around here. Yeah. So you've got the big mountains on this side. On this, this side. side. Right. And it is, I think it's close to Madagascar? Yeah, from, Madagascar from... is, yeah, it's in the, Madagascar is, is here, it's just right after uh -huh. the, yeah. So you come from which city? Yeah, so my dad is from uh, Oshun State, but mm -hmm. we lived in Ogun State, where he met my mom. Okay. So my mom is from Ogun, so we just lived there. So if you ask me, I, will, I would say I was born and bred in Ogun. But okay. if I want to go with my father's heritage, uh -huh. I would say I'm from Oshun. Okay, so you, you spent most of your life? In Ogun State. Ogun State. Right. And what, what's kind of, what kind of geography is it? Landscape? It's a, uh, it's a quiet place. It's mm -hmm. not. You got mountains. You got lakes around. We've or... got rocks. We've got lakes. Mm -hmm. Not mountains. Okay. It's not a mountainous area, but we've got like um, just uh, Asian places. Just Asian places. Right, Asian places like the tourists would like to visit. Okay. What about the job opportunities and livelihood of people? What do they do? Um, so, indigenously, we are farmers, right? Uh -huh. Farmers, we are into cash crops. Indigenously, yeah. we will cash come back crops. So later. Yeah. Right, cash crops, farmers, hunters, you uh -huh. know. Uh, but now, people just, it's just like any major growing uh, city, mm -hmm. you know. So, people are into a lot of things, agriculture, education, law, um, things like that, you okay. know. And uh, what about your father? What does he do? My father is retired. My father would be, I think, 74. Uh -huh. And he spent most of his life Yeah, there. so he worked in the civil service. Oh, okay. He worked in the Ministry of Health. My, nice. Yeah, and yeah, he worked in the Ministry of Health. My mom uh, is a nurse or retired as a nurse, a midwife. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so that's it. She's also retired. You got brothers and sisters? I've got two sisters. You got two sisters. Are right. they married? Yes. Happily no. married. And you? I'm married. Married to? Married to the love of my life. Okay. It, it, that's, that, that's really good. But the uh, question is, who did you marry? As in, from a girl from your country? or a girl I married from... a girl. I married a Vietnamese girl. A Vietnamese girl. Right. And you met her here? Yes, I met her. Yeah. And you've been going around for a long time? A long time. We, we were dating for five years. Oh, wow. 
So that's uh, that's pretty long time. Seven yeah. years in Vietnam, and then you started dating the world. Five years later, you were married. Right. And she is so, she is into education. Right, she is into education. And you are also into education. Right now, yes. I mean, we both education. actually share the same profession. So what is that? We are teachers, educators, English teachers. जो मैं आप लोगों के साथ बता रहा था ना कि वियतनाम के अंदर ऑपरचुनिटी है टेल मी वट वट डू यू थिंक अबाउट इंग्लिश टीचिंग ऑपरचुनिटी इन वियतनाम सॉरी आई एम गोइंग फ्रॉम नाइजीरिया इट्स 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 ग्रोइंग इन राइट आई मीन देर ए लॉट ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटीज इफ यू नो वेट टू लुक फॉर एन इंग्लिश टीचिंग जॉब सो ये इफ यू नो वेट टू लुक एंड If you are willing to put in the hours, yeah, mm-hmm. there are a lot of. And you, you think it's it's like a good living? It is. It is hundred percent. It is a good living, bro. Hundred percent. It is. It it is available for everybody. Right, everybody. Be it natives, non-natives. I'm like you everybody. coming from Nigeria. Everybody. What kind of what kind of things you got into? Was it easy for you? Because some people say Vietnam, like I'm not saying, people say Vietnam is racist. They're everywhere though, right? Everywhere. It ain't only in Vietnam. It's everywhere. You find different people. I mean, everywhere in every country. Some would like I was talking to someone the other day, and they say among racists, then you say they are racist. Mm-hmm. But if you come to my country, where we have like over five hundred ethnic groups, five hundred ethnic over five hundred ethnic groups. Wow. And you still find some people saying, "Oh, you know, because he's from the east, or he's from the north, mm-hmm. he ain't my brother." That's not racism. That's tribalism, right? So it's not even there. It's everywhere, even in the same country where we're supposed to love ourselves as brothers. We say, "I'm from this region. You're from that region." Yeah, that brothers, maybe. Uh, superiority, inferiority, or whatever complex it is, or maybe domination—you can say. Right. Uh, it is one one race. Capitalism, or one... domination, whatever it is. Uh, yeah, that's that's a very broader topic to talk mm-hmm. about. But uh, tell me, how is the life in in uh, Nigeria? Well, it's been a long time. I left Nigeria, but it's been how long? It's been seven plus years. So is it like Vietnam your first country that you're traveling? No, I was in uh Ghent for 6 months, then I came to Vietnam. Uh-huh. And just uh studying studying and all. And where all have you been on the globe? Just a few places, bro. Uh-huh. Not not well traveled as here. Right? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm not yeah, I'm not right. well traveled. I've been let's to see, places I would say. I've You've been, been to, to Nepal, haven't you? I've been to Nepal. I've been to Bhutan. A couple of countries, but let's start with you first. Right. You tell me which countries, then I will go with mine. I've been to Ghana. Ghana. And uh, just six months in Ghent and Vietnam. And Vietnam. And, and uh, Thailand. Thailand. And uh, you said something before that you've been to UK somewhere. No. Belgium, UK. Yeah, France. I said Belgium. Belgium. You've right. been to Belgium. Ghent. Yeah, Ghent, Ghent is it? Ghent. Ghent sorry. Uh, Geography. Yeah. Sorry, teacher. Okay. So what were you doing in in uh, Belgium? Studying. I was doing research. Okay. So you came on study visa right. to Vietnam yeah, also? Yeah. Okay. And you studied aquaculture like you mentioned. Yeah. You yeah. have a master's degree? Yes, I do. Oh wow. Okay. I do uh, in tropical aquaculture, yeah. So what made you make a shift from tropical agriculture to teaching English? Well, for one, if you want to enjoy aquaculture, There are two things you got to do. It's mm-hmm. either you go into research mm-hmm. and the research will just be for the uh business owners. Uh-huh. There ain't much money in the research, but there is a lot of knowledge. Okay. There is more money in the business, but there is also a lot of risks. Mm-hmm. So, I figured out that what you need for any business is capital, right? Mhm. So, if you have this gig that will afford afford i mean that you, that will afford you this amount of money to start your own business that you you know a lot about mm-hmm. then it balances out because mm-hmm. you would use this money to fund your passion you know mm-hmm. so you got your answer there all right and does english teaching support in some way yeah it does it does I mean, in a lot of way 
A lot of ways. I got, yeah, I got no other gig. I'm a person in Ho Chi Minh City is earning. Because even the, 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 the cost of living in Ho Chi Minh City is, is greater than the cost of living in, say... Uh, in some provinces. In some provinces. True that. Uh, living cost and apartment cost inclusive, everything goes down if you go in a provincial side or if you go in a countryside. Uh, you can find cheaper places like apartment like this can cost you like anything less than 20,000 inclusive your electricity and all. Maybe bigger than mine apartment. It's 20,000, is that in dollars or what? No, 20,000 is like rupees. Right? All right. 20,000 rupees is roughly is like... Uh, 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 five, no, a uh, hundred dollars is like seven thousand, eight thousand rupees. So it's like two hundred fifty, less than two hundred fifty odd dollars per month. Right. On housing. Yeah. Right. Right. So for for like a decent furnished apartment, but if you similarly, if you go in uh, Ho Chi Minh, that would cost you like double the money, like four hundred. Hundred percent. Yeah, it will cost you more than that. Uh, even more. So that more. raises your cost more. Anyway, so tell me more about Nigeria. How is life in Nigeria overall? Overall, for an average Nigerian, I would say it's, um, it's filled with struggles. Yeah, in Nigeria? Right. What, what does an average person make, uh, like an average job, a daily living, a medium, you know, middle class family? Because then they, they've said, I mean, the government has said, which not all business owners follow, the minimum wage is, um, say, per month. Mm -hmm. Per month should be, the minimum wage should be $100. $100? $100 is like 7,000 Indian rupees. Right. Which is like... Yeah, a difficult living, I would right. say. Right. That's the minimum wage. And That's believe like me, you will... Right, in some, in some places. But you've also believed me when I tell you this, bro. You've got some rich, rich, rich guys there, I'm telling you. When <laughs> I'm not even joking. Countries like, you know, full of corruption. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, if Nigeria is one. But I would like to know. Because a lot of people say that, you know, there are countries with uh, poor income often have like a lot of crime rates. Like if we talk about just our neighbor countries like Pakistan, almost getting bankrupt. <laughs> almost. Oh, word? Pakistan. Oh, really? Yeah. They don't have like a full-fledged running economy like everything is normal. Oh, Not wow. everything is normal. So, uh, petrol is double the price in Pakistan than well, in India. Pakistan don't produce petrol, though, do they? No, we all import. India imports, but India has all uh, its own refineries and all. Right. India is high in tech. Oh, what? Right. What we call Bharat is... India is a given name, though. I don't like to call it. Like, it's like a, somebody giving me a foreign name, like, hey, you are Tony, and I would be like, okay, you call me Tony, I don't care. But the rest of the people who know me would call me Raj. So right, I like call that, you Raj. Right. Okay, yeah, cheers. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's, that's the thing, that's your real identity. Right. That's your real identity. You don't want to camouflage and say, hey, I look like this, so I could be like this. You're not, you could be, but you're not. Mm -hmm. Even if you could be, you're not. Yeah, you know, a crow true. can dress up whatever they want to dress up like, cannot be like a, a, a peacock. A crow would still be a crow. Right. Right. So anyways, so tell me about, uh, like I was talking about life in Nigeria. Mm. So how is, uh, the, you said the economy is not too well to do. No, it is well. The economy it is, is well. good. We've just got um, people that... We've just got greedy people at the helm of, uh, of it all. And how is the politics in uh, Nigeria? Well, we, we have a president. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there, there were a lot of uh, talks about the last election, you know, that it, was in, that it wasn't free and fair. It was. And then 
yeah like it wasn't free and fair because there were some delays in um the results and we so we have a new technology to when it comes to election and then it's called like a bivers or whatever uh -huh. and then the INEC so we have a body in charge of electoral processes mm -hmm. said that they were gonna put out the results in real time as they're counting it they're gonna put it out there so everyone could follow it everyone will be up to date about all uh, all the things going on but then from their part they didn't put it out there in real time and okay. they, they saw a lot of uh, there were a lot of evidences put out there that they were changing figures and all a lot of arguments and all it went on for some time and then they said they would go to court and all but the thing is it wasn't transparent enough that's just it it wasn't transparent enough and how do you think uh, the crime in the crime rates and stuff. yeah in some in some in some uh, parts of Nigeria mm -hmm. the crime is skyrocketing skyrocketing right and terrorism like uh, mass killing bombarding no not not mass killings just we got one we call them now like kidnappings and all asking Ransoms. for ransoms yeah things is it like, like too common in some parts of Nigeria yes like uh, a lot of people, I'm not saying, because I know some people, Right. I'm not saying, but I'm just saying it's like a lot of people in media like to stereotype, like specific, uh, specifically Nigerians to deal with, you know, when they go abroad to deal with drugs and stuff. A lot of people say, even uh, in India, there's uh, a huge community of Nigerian people who come on tourist visa, who come on uh, student visa to study and some of the newspapers they would say that their hands are tied with the drugs is it like this the same scenario everywhere What's I mean when it comes to my pers my perspective and to be honest I'm totally frank is it's not only Nigerians doing it mm -hmm. I don't say it's right mm -hmm. but the the theme the mentality that it's only Nigerians doing it mm -hmm. is just really unfair and it's untrue mm -hmm. because they've got lots of people are doing it believe me regardless of the nationality it has to do with uh, your personality like i say if you're greedy you don't mind doing some but crazy why things. media is like s trying to stereotype when i meet people like you l l this is this is the trick this is the media trick i'll put out something out there to gain attention Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So I would say whatever I know people want to hear, just so people could pay attention to me. Mm -hmm. And that's how I get my money. Mm -hmm. So a lot of false, a lot of fake news the media will put out there. Nobody tries to cross check. Nobody tries to double check. Some are true. Some are untrue. But once they put it out there and a lot of people, I mean, nowadays technology has made it so... I mean, so easy. You just have to go on the internet, and you will see, like, even a, a, a low class, uh, an upcoming blogger, mm -hmm. will just put something out there so people will check his his or her blog, and nobody is fact checking these things if it's right or wrong. So now people have that mentality that some are doing it, but not all of them are doing it. Mm -hmm. Not all Nigerians are doing it, and it's not only Nigerians that are doing it. Yeah, true that. If, if Nigerians, if there were a lot, I mean, there, I'm sure there are a lot of Nigerians in New York and all other, I mean, in America and all, they would target like, oh, it's the Nigerians bringing in cocaine or bringing in hard drugs there. But then they would also say it's the Mexicans doing it. But it's, the media is just like, you know, they caught one, one news and they would just try to right. put all their fire right. into all the, one, Just all, for it to burn, just for me, to, for, for them to gain the, the... What do you call it? The audience. Yeah. Similarly, there is a case happening in India, uh, Manipur. It's currently, it's like, uh, it's a tribal thing happening. And mm. It's not just limited to that. It's just so outraged right now. People killing people, burning. And it's like a mass thing happening. It's not. And they got like modern weapons. 
like coming from, I don't know where, people say it coming from Myanmar and coming from Bangladesh to support and uh, militancy and stuff. Because remember, I, I, did we discuss the elections are about to come. Right, yeah, you told me and, about that. Uh, there is a party of formed in, uh, not one party, there are like 26 parties formed an alliance and uh, to defeat just one guy. Mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, something. But then I think it's left, it's left for, for, for the people to decide, right? Yeah, it's I'm like people definitely, I mean, like even I come in the people. So when right. I take a general idea, I mean, I, I see just 26 people are standing against just one. Me trying to understand who is going to be the leader. Because from my perspective, I see you, 26 people got together, you have one set target. But when I look at you, who is going to lead that you don't even have a face. You know what I mean? No, I don't. What do you mean? So, uh, suppose... Did, 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 did they have, like, manifestos? You have, like, uh, uh, town, town hall there, meetings there is where a you lead. come out, yeah, you say what you doing, want to do. They're doing conferences and stuff. Right, and they're talking, they're engaging the public, right? Yes. But out of these 26 big parties, who is going to be the... F- the leader, every uh, the rest of them gonna follow. So haven't they chosen a leader yet? No. Oh, when they are they chosen a good name though? When are they gonna choose the the, the person? Nobody knows. The flag bearer. Uh, they're like, they're like, oh, we got, we got like on demand. What do you need? You need like a, a young prime minister. We got young people. You got old prime minister. You got, we got old. So they're giving like options, like somebody selling you stuff. Hey, what do you want? Mm. And then they got, we got female, we got like, oh, it seems like everybody is capable to lead just because you say, okay, what do you want? I would give you that. But are they like good leaders? Like you said, mm. fact check. Are they just defeat one guy and then bring who? Yeah, but then uh, how, how is it run? They would have primaries though, right? So I don't know how they, how they run. Uh, like. <laughs> but the 26 parties that came, that formed an alliance, have to just bring forward one person, right? Yeah, they all formed alliances and they call, they call themselves India. Uh, one report I was just going through and they say uh, to the opposition party, where uh, the Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister comes from, the party, uh, like uh, she's talking, the media lady, she's talking to the representative of that party. Right. Okay. So you got a problem with this India. And I remember it's not the country that we are talking about. It's with right? a party, it, yeah. It's, it's a party. So if you got a problem with India, why don't you go to Pakistan? Now, Pakistan is a country. What do you think? Oh. I think the, that's the person from the media saying that, right? Yeah. She, I mean, the, if she's a girl, isn't it? Yeah. She just wants attention, bro, because it's totally out of context. If you're trying to play that game... I'm referring to India as a political party now, not a country, uh-huh. right? So it's a difference. If, if, I, if, if, if there is another political party called Pakistan, then you tell me to go to Pakistan, <laughs> right? But there ain't no political party called Pakistan. Like, India is just the name of the party. You can't tell me to leave my country because I have... So why don't you tell them to change the name then? Or somebody filed a complaint, though. I don't know. Uh-huh. They don't Tell have them to a, the name. They don't have, even have a Hindi name, which our most of people, indigenous people, speak. You could request a I mean, right? You could ask them to. If they know the meaning, though, <laughs> it's going to be hard to find in the dictionary for them because the representatives don't even come like their family background don't even come from India. Oh, what? Like oh, the opposition party leader. She she was Italian, got married to Indian political party leader, and that's how she is into politics. So half her roots or her roots originally comes from Italy, and her son, who is also the party member, half the roots is definitely the maternal side is. So do you think because let me ask you this: Do you think because half her roots is from Italy, she doesn't have the best interest of India at heart? Bro, to be honest, I mean, like, no, I mean, if I see from a global perspective, right. uh, I think there's a lot of things that needs to be changed in India. 
a lot means a lot. I mean, like, if you want to bring tourism, if you want to bring things, you got to focus on indigenous things that are, like, native to that land and bring that interest of global people into your country. Now yeah, being, but, but have, you, have you thought about it that if, if someone, an indigenous person, walks up to her and say, ma'am, madam, can we do this? What if we do this? What if we do this? Would she be open to that? Uh, to that suggestion. 19. Regardless of, now I'm just trying to make a point, regardless of she's half Italian, half India, or that. I'm saying it doesn't matter if you found, if you found a problem that needs to be solved, and you're really good at heart, and you really want to solve that problem for the betterment of that nation, yeah. for the betterment of where you call, I mean, wherever you find peace, bruv, now, Wherever you find peace, you call it home. Yes. So if she's been there, half Italian, she's got roots there. She, she wasn't born there, but she got married to one of them. Mm -hmm. And she has got a kid and everything. And she sees this problem like, oh, let us invest in tourism. Let us do this, let us do this. Ain't so Indian though. can be number So Yeah. You're saying it's not happening because she's not indigenous. Or you're saying it's not happening because she doesn't know what she's doing. What I'm saying is... Both things, I would say. What I'm saying is, if you see a problem and you decide to tackle that problem, to solve the problem, forget where you're coming from. You want this... But bro, to you good. need to understand what the problem is and how deep the problem is. From where you stand, your perspective could be different than the people standing, you know, at the land. At what the do you want? What do both of us share in common? Do we want the the betterment of that nation or do we want at what cost at the good cost right at the good cost destroying the ancient culture why are you destroying the ancient culture to change the demography is that what you think or have you fact checked that I know for sure because I've been there. I know I know what things happen around. So that's what I'm saying. I think there there has to be Manipur, like... the one that I I talked about. It lies far in the eastern corner of India. Back in the day, there was a prime minister called Jawaharlal Nehru. He made an amendment, a law that if you are a Hindu preacher, right, a saint. You would not be allowed in that territory to preach. But the other religions like uh, missionaries and uh, Islam could go there to convert people. But you being a local Hindu cannot go there to preach your traditional ancient things that their roots are definitely tied to. But a third party, a foreign religion, is being dominated. Now, understand one thing. The moment they get that change, the religion, they get the minority status, they get, uh, you know, Bro, everything. Would you answer this question, though? Why? Why can't you go there to preach Hinduism? Because the law holds you down. The Constitution, Who made the law? The uh, Prime Minister of India from the similar party that I'm talking about. But then you said that was back in the day, or just just present? No, that hasn't changed. But that uh, so someone indeed someone made the law back in the days, right? Yes. An indigenous person made the law. Um, I wouldn't Bro, say this indigenous. Is it. This is it. This I is what I want you indigenous. to know. This is what I want you to know, and I'm being hundred percent truthful. Mm -hmm. You see brothers turning on brothers mm -hmm. just because of greed. Mm -hmm. So an indigenous person or, uh, yeah, an indigenous person coming, making some kind of policies that won't favor his people has just fallen to that apple, has just bitten that apple and has just fallen to greed. Bro, greed will make you turn on your brothers. Greed is just those, I mean, it's what? It's a five letter word, isn't it? Greed and every, and power corrupts, you know, yeah. power corrupts, the love of power. You, you would, I'm from Africa, and you would hear of, uh, you might have heard of Mugabe. Mugabe, he, yeah. He was one of the presidents uh -huh. in one African country, uh -huh. and he held on to that position for 34 years. Mm. Till he couldn't walk anymore. 
Go on, explain that. It's greed. Green. I it is green. greed. And everyone, if it, it depends on your heart. But if, did, if, he, did he do good for the people? Well, he, he didn't, bro. I mean, from what I've heard, I'm, I'm, I wasn't there in the country, but what I've read, which might also have been doctored, from what I've read, I mean, if you do, look at, look at, look at Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. He fought that, uh, the appetite thing. He fought it, went to prison for like 20 years, came back, oh, they said they wanted him to become president. Mate, he had just one term. Mm -hmm. And then he left when the ovation was loud. Some people will cling to that until they die. True that. Some people will cling to that until they die. So what I'm saying, it doesn't matter about um, your... It's just the person. I, 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 I treat people on the personal level. Mm -hmm. I look at your personality. I don't look at your, your race, your ethnicity, or whatever. It's just if I can find a common ground, between mm -hmm. both of us, then we roll together. Mm -hmm. But if I still can't, if we, are, if we are not on the same page, to lie to ourselves, mm -hmm. I will tell you a story. I mean, you might have, I'm sure, I don't know if you have that in, in, I think you've told me this story before, two brothers fighting over a particular region. Mm -hmm. Why will two brothers? Why can't we just do it together? How about it? You've told me the story. Yeah. Why it's, do we have to fight? Epic. Why do we have to fight? It is out of greed. It's out of greed. You are my brother. I am your brother. Whatever you own, I own. All right, let's control this place together. But no, you want to be the, the, the one in, in power, the one in charge. Because every human, an average human, wants to be lord over everything. That's why we are the fucking... I shouldn't say that. Cancel fucking. That's why we are the top predator. We are the top predator, right? Because we, we, now we live in Earth. We're trying to go to Mars just to colonize Mars, uh -huh. just to like bring our human field and just put it into Mars because we want to be the top. We want to remain top. Now it takes discernment. It takes, it take, it takes another type of spirit. Like you would maybe, I mean, you do yoga. I know you do yoga well. It takes that meditation to find that balance not to be greedy just to be to be peaceful i am not sure that to be peaceful but then greed i have i'll tell you some politicians in nigeria just one of them and they've got like six houses in different countries bro wow. just one person six houses in different countries you only have seven days a week can you sleep in all those places but then you see the same person, I mean, the same human as we are. You see people going to schools with students going to schools with no shoes on their feet. I will take you to places in Nigeria where you have mansions on water. Believe me. And I would also take you to people, places where you see kids going up with just a notebook, no backpack. But they just want to strive just to get this education. Like in India, we have financial capital called Mumbai. Mm -hmm. And in Mumbai, we have the biggest slum in the world. It's called Dharavi. That's in Lagos. You're talking about Lagos. Yeah. <laughs> That's in Lagos. So we got the wealthiest people in Mumbai. It's, mm -hmm. the, it's the financially run capital, though it's not on, like, it's not financial. It's said to be financial capital. Yeah. But overall, it's like we're the most wealthiest people of India live. And still, you got the biggest slum in that yeah. same how do, you, how do you explain that? I don't. I, I've been there once, I think twice, and I don't feel like because uh, I'm a kind of guy, if you know me, I, I like going to secluded places like right. you know, off-beaten tracks and like finding just, just me. Tell me about something. Right. You were talking about colonization. Mm. What kind of religion do people uh, practice in Africa, if you're open to talk about it? Oh, they, we had uh, traditional uh, religion. Traditional religion. Right. So what do you call that? Uh, do you have a name? From my tribe, it's just... Uh, now you're taking me back. The name of the religion... Anything that you refer to as 
So no, we you know like in in Christianity, so we've got uh, some uh, Protestants and no, no, it's not that. It's just the name of like you've got deities, right? Yeah. So the traditional religion has also got deities, uh-huh. right? So, uh, so what I, kind I, of I deities? Might, I might be wrong because I might be wrong. I mean, so you don't practice that. Some people still do. You don't. I don't. Okay, so, uh, so somebody like you, who's not practicing, tell me what you know about your ancient roots. Yeah, I know some, not all of the deities. Why? I know some of them. Your father or maybe forefathers, did they practice? Well, from as long as I can remember, we've always been Christians. And how long would that be? I don't know, if I'm still young. I mean, I, I'm sure my grandfather... Because I grew up to know him as a Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad's always been a Christian. So it's like only two generations? That I know of, yeah. My mom used to be a Muslim, but then okay. she converted to Christianity. Okay. And then we are also Christians. And how did that go? Converting from Muslim to Christianity? I mean, it's the family she came up, she, she grew up in, they respected her choice, you know. She she wants to convert. She's because got a reason. It's a big kind of taboo in Islam to convert in other religions. And uh, it depends on the type of family. That's what I'm saying. We've got extremists, you know, some mm -hmm. extremists like, oh, this is how it's done. You shouldn't do that. But is uh, Islam? Sorry, I'm interrupting. But right. is is Islam and Christianity like the native? to Africa or native to Nigeria? I, mean, I, don't, like know, I don't know. Days. I don't know about Islam because I'm not a Muslim. Mm -hmm. But I know about Christianity and my tribe. Mm -hmm. My tribe, like I told you before, they are deities. Mm -hmm. And I don't know since when they've stopped that. But so I grew up to know three basic religions. Mm -hmm. The Islam, Islamic religion, Christianity, and the traditional religion. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to mention about the Muslim, because, you know, from the history books I've read, we have the Arabs. So I don't know for how long that has been, and I don't know where they've, uh, where they've occupied. Maybe they, are, they were in a part of Nigeria before. Because I think I have read that somewhere that they were in a part of Nigeria before. Mm -hmm. So if, if you are going to that, you might also call that their indigenous religion. Okay. Do you get me? Yeah. yeah so, yeah. but from my tribe, I know. I mean, some of some people in my tribes are also Muslims. Some are Christians. Okay. Some are traditionalists. Mm -hmm. So, but I grew up to know just three religions, and I grew up to know you can choose from any religion you want, and I've chosen to be Christian. Okay. The same as so my when family. you say deities, do you have like a, a figurine that you... Yes. Like, uh, like India, like the traditional, we call Sanat and a lot of people call us Hindu. So we have like idols, deities, idols, like figurines, figures of gods and, you know, different deities depicted on a rock or maybe anything. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's the actual figure, right? It is a representation of a god. Because uh, in we have uh, now, don't quote me, but I think there is um, Ifa. Ifa has a son called Onrumila. I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. Please don't quote. No, me. No, okay, okay. I just. But then I know Onrumila came from heaven through. Uh, that's what we're told through. Uh, a rope uh-huh and then yeah for to make land he came with a chicken mm -hmm. so he started giving putting corns so wherever the chicken goes picks up the corn it turns to land okay and so we have some things we call I think it's Orisha I'm not sure which is a hundred and twenty something or is that there, there's a number there I can't I don't remember the number but there is a number associated with that story and no one can know all the numbers and things like that and then yeah so I don't know much about that but then let me tell you to let me tell you some things I know like um, 
the god of we've got the god of thunder okay uh indra. which which we which we call shongo shongo okay. yeah we've we got call the, indra oh you got thunder we've got the the goddess of water goddess of water we call Rohan. that's uh, what do you call oh yeah oh yeah ganga um, in india now i feel so you got sun sun deities moon deities none that i know of okay none that i know of what kind of calendar do people follow like traditional now you follow georgian calendar yeah i mean bro if you if you're talking like nigeria again it's gain high independence i think uh 3 years after india we gained it 1960 1960 so we were 13 years 47 we got aha uh-huh. and uh this this is the one of the downsides of uh history because and you were occupied get, by who the british the british and portuguese no no or the Just french the no, no no nobody can so people don't speak like a um, couple of countries that i know of like in uh, Tanzania not sure i'm not don't quote on me that would be Rwanda right uh, like they speak french rwanda speaks french yeah uganda speaks french yeah rwanda so, rwanda yeah. rwanda okay yeah so, cameroon speaks french okay so there were french invaders also portuguese people also who came so that's what i was just trying <laughs> it's to it's crazy when you call them invaders <laughs> just going on to somebody's property coming into my house and just start living there call it your own doesn't make your your property i would definitely call you invader people you, you invaded you still sound mad you still sound well i'm i'm like you know a fair guy who believes in what is right is right right and that's you how you come taking from me and then you you like what british do nowadays uh I'm I'm just saying I haven't been to to the UK so I'm not generalizing people but still you know talking about the politics they got the freaking one of the biggest museums in the world yeah I've heard about uh, that like a museum in London somewhere right the British Museum of London I think they call it and they got they got things from all over the world that they display with like their their chest out you know in a, in a broad fashion way that hey this comes from india hey this comes from philippines they this, this comes from nigeria south africa ghana you name the place bro and these are all ancient antique items that i'm like if you sell in a market that's in millions billions but it's somebody's heritage that they want to keep on why would you keep and display it is like hey we you know what we looted back in a day and just do what you got to do i'm i'm going to display what we looted They're keeping it as a trophy yeah it was like the head hunters uh, back in the day would keep the heads out <laughs> i i'm sure they got lots from nigeria too <laughs> <laughs> yeah you'll be you'll be like surprised damn they do the thing is the thing is i think the thing about nigeria is now nigerians are requesting for it and there are a lot of uh, meetings about that so sorry we don't, <laughs> so we don't know if, if we don't know if they're going to return it or things but they are just trying to look for the the peaceful way to like request for it but I don't think they would want to return it. So that's how uh, the the Christianity came to Nigeria. Yeah, I mean, I would assume so. But what would what what were your ancestors be doing at that point of time? Like in what kind of occupation back, back farmers, then? farmers, hunters, H- hunters, farmers, farmers, right, so they would have they were... cattle breeding and stuff. No, uh not not uh animals. They do animals. cash crops. Okay. So they will be on farms. That's why they marry a lot of women. Mhm. So have a lot of kids to help them on the farm. They would have So uh, is it like an ancient tradition to marry or is it just the Christianity or the Islam to to, to marry what? Marry many girls or women? Yeah, it's I mean it's it's indigenous. It's the 
Asian tradition to marry. It's the indigenous, indigenous tradition, not the, the, the forced, uh, not forced strong Christianity. No, even Christianity won't allow you to marry two wives, right? Really? Yeah, it I don't. don't. I don't know. It don't allow you to marry Islam, two wives. Islam uh, allows you to marry four. Yeah, as long as the, there's a clause there, though. As long as you got to love them equally and take care of them all. Uh, tell me about it, bro. Laws are everywhere, but don't we break laws every now and then? Yeah, I told you my grandfather was a Christian, and he still married six wives. And how did that go? Was it okay with... I wouldn't advise anyone to marry six wives now, bro. I wouldn't advise you because so when now you you you, you, you ain't gonna know then, but then the, the kids will grow up. They won't be in harmony. Mm -hmm. You are just if you want to do that, you could do it, but not for the. So your granddad was a Christian though. Yeah, and he married all Christian women. I don't know about that. Okay, I don't know about that. Are you in touch with any of your like? Siblings from other. Not from other. Uh, not from other grandmothers. Okay. I was in church with my uncles, you know. Oh, okay. And my aunts, yeah, but and just a few of, I know. What kind of population do you have? Like, if you distribute the population of indigenous people or just Christianity, Islam, what kind of percentage would you have? I would say it's 50-50, right? 50 /50. I might be wrong, but if you ask me, I would say it's 50-50. And do you have because like, if you go uh, to the north, they are mostly Muslims. Mm -hmm. Some are Christians. If you go to the east, they are Christians. And do you have the, like problems, like religious problems with one another, unrest, political unrest, or just kind of political? Yes, religious. Religious. If you would, you would count like. Uh, the Boko Haram, religious, isn't it? The ISIS. Yeah, uh, the bo Book of Haram, I mean, like... That's religious, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, that is, that comes but they don't Islam. just take them, they don't take the Christians. They take anybody they can take. You know, they so, don't care your, your religion, they don't care about that. They just take anybody they can take and then try to convert you to like... Who converts who? The terrorists. The, 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 the. And who are the terrorists? Which, which group? Do, do they, they claim they are Boko Haram. Okay, so is Boko Haram comes from the Islam side? From the north. I, Islam as in Muslim people? For yeah, the, that's what they say, the Sharia, the Sharia law. So they, they try to put Sharia law on you? What do you mean on me? On me, on you, as in like the people converting is like no. This is it. You know, this is what they do. This is it. They want something. Every terrorist organization wants something. Mm -hmm. The government ain't bulging, not giving it to them. Mm -hmm. Then they try to look for a way to hurt the government, mm -hmm. and then they sometimes kidnap. Most times, kidnap in Nigeria, kidnap lots of young girls and all uh, in the north. Mm -hmm. And then they just take them and we kidnap them. And then the government starts looking for them. And, uh, and then they start asking, oh, we need money. We need this. We need this. Mm -hmm. Or give us uh, this amount. We're going to release like 20 of them. Or give us, give us this amount. We're going to release like 50 of them. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not like, that, that's why I said, it's not like they're forcing Islam. They're just being selfish. They're, they're just they're, money. Money and they're just, it's their own, their own ideology. They just want to enforce the ideology on everyone, regardless of the religion, if you're Muslim, if you're Christian. They target the governments, mostly. And so they just make demands. If the government bulges to the demand, yeah, they make another outrageous demand. So they keep on doing it, threatening to to disrupt the the peaceful government that has been going on. Yeah, how so they are often not, that happens? I don't think it's happened recently, though. Mm -hmm. What's not, the... not in mass. I think the the one that happened that was widely known was the two hundred and fifty five Chibok girls. Uh, two hundred and fifty Chibok girls that were kidnapped. Oh wow! Yeah, that, that was I think five. Six, I might be wrong, I gotta fact check that five, six years ago. And some of them 
Some of them even haven't been found. Uh, What's the uh, present situation now? Now is the 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 anything going wrong? Anything happening now? Politically, right? Yeah. Now they've just is the. I heard something news. The 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 fuel the uh -huh. fuel prices skyrocketed and yeah prices of things going up because of the fuel price. That's the major issue now. And the subsidy removal, because it's a long story. So it's not just uh, in, in Vietnam also the fuel prices went up in last, I think, like a year or two. Like a year since oh, right. Russia. I remember I came 2019, I was paying uh, 18,000, 20,000 VND to get a liter. Now I pay 29. Oh, what? Well, I've never paid attention to that. Okay. I've never paid attention to that. So it's like almost 10,000 dong, which is like 35 Indian rupees. All right. I've never paid attention to that in Vietnam. It's like in Vietnam. almost half a dollar, bro, increase in per liter price. But yeah, we know that's worldwide though, right? Yeah. But a lot of people in India say that it's just happening in India. No, it's not. It's, it's, it's a global thing happening. It's a global, it's a global thing. But then the, 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 the argument of Nigerians now is that Nigerian is the, it's an oil producing country. Mm -hmm. They are the what top. Is, so richness is oil? Now, yeah. And? When they found the crude oil, they left agriculture. Uh -huh. So everyone just focused on the oil, stealing out of it. Are there a lot of Indian people in Nigeria? I used to work for an Indian organization in Nigeria. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, I, my, my, my supervisor was uh, Gautam. Uh -huh. Gautam. Yeah, that's Gautam. his name. Gautam was uh, the, the old name for uh, Lord Buddha. Oh, really? When he was a prince. He didn't like me. <laughs> ah, why? <laughs> that's a story for another day, bro. He's just a chilled guy, you know. Just a chilled guy. Right? Yeah. Yeah, go out to Never mind. Yeah, sometimes you go along with people, sometimes you don't go along with people. I, I never went along with my, my managers. I was like... Yeah, and then I had one, we had one, Singh. Singh, Singh yeah. is the King Sardar. Oh, another person, I don't... Another person hey, that he, works did there. He, did he wear a turban? No. No, okay. It just, it was, his name was Singh. And, Rajan Singh, yeah. Rajan Singh, okay, Rajan, Rajan Singh. Again. They work for Triton, Triton Aquaculture, Triton yeah. Africa, yeah. Nice, bro. What else? <laughs> what do you think about the uh, uh, travel, though? Well, I'm, I'm not the travel person, you know, I'm not the travel butterfly. So what brought you, like you said, you came for uh, education and then what made you stick to Vietnam? For one, it's peaceful. Mm -hmm. It's peaceful. It's How safe. How peaceful it is. Very peaceful. For me, I mean, living in the province, I'm living in very peaceful. It's, I mean, it's perfect for someone like me. I don't want a lot of hassles, you know. I just want to do my thing and live a hassle-free life. What about the job opportunities? Yeah, you get them. If you, if you, if you, how would I say? There are a lot of opportunities if you know where to look. So it's not lack of opportunities. No, no. Well, plenty of them. Plenty Every, of them. Everybody is like everybody, plateful. Everybody. Just come in and just grab your pie. Grab your pie. It's, it's enough to go around. And yeah, it's peaceful. It's, I mean, people, some, some people are friendly, some are not, you know, just like everywhere else. And yeah, for the fact that it's peaceful, for one, it just makes everything right as rain. Yeah. How would you say living cost of, uh, like living in Vietnam as an in the, pro in the Like I say now, it also depends on the province, like Mumbai, like uh, New Delhi. If you're living in those type of places, you can't expect, uh, I don't, tell me, uh, like Kanto in, in India, tell me, a place like Kanto. Yeah, it's in West Bengal, we have like, it's like Mekong, kind of Delta. Yeah. But so it's the, not like, you know, some places are like chilled, but a lot of places are political unrest. 
in India, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, it's just if you find that child, and I'm from somewhere like this in Nigeria. Yeah. So Lagos is very close to me because I'm from Ogun. It's uh -huh. just like Saigon, you know. Okay. And I'm in Ogun State. Grew up there. My family lived a, a good life. Nothing flamboyant, you uh -huh. know. Just we behaved ourselves. We weren't greedy. My dad, my parents didn't bring us up that way. Be contented, you know. That's that's always the lesson. Mm -hmm. uh, godliness with contentment is great gain. True that. You know, so that's why I think I just I feel right in. Is that why you got married to a Vietnamese girl here? I got married to a Vietnamese girl because I love the girl. Okay, what about the culture? The culture is the same as I, my culture. Now, what do you say? It's, it's like it's you know, even in the language, even even in the language, is the same. If someone is older than you, you got to call, in my, in my tribe, if someone is older than you, you got to call the person like, uh, there's a pronoun for the person. Mm -hmm. If someone is younger than you, there is a pronoun yeah, for that yeah, person. For sure. You don't wake up in the morning and say, what's up, dad? Yeah. That's in my culture. You got to greet your father. You know, if your dad is correcting you, you got to listen keenly and take to correction. You got to respect elders. That's the Vietnamese culture. Mm -hmm. Children. You gotta expect respect elders, respect other people, you know. And it's they've got good family culture out here. I mean, the ones that I've seen, good family culture. And I mean, what else? Well, you what else? You realize that we have been talking for too long. Yes, I do. Okay, uh, so we're gonna wrap up soon, right? Tell me, uh, tell our viewers though, uh, since you got married to a Vietnamese woman, right? Tell us uh, good tips if somebody wants to date a Vietnamese girl. Well, you get a bit. The first thing first is depends on, like in every country, mm -hmm. depends on the type of girl you're looking for. Mm -hmm. well, what should there I are, keep in mind? Suppose I'm dating. There, I are, three, date there are three types of girls everywhere. Okay. You've got the city girls. Mm -hmm. You know the city girls, yeah. right? They are like the flamboyant ones. You've got the... The, the middle mini, one. the micro minis, and <laughs> yeah, and then you've got the countryside of the countryside. Okay. So if you want to date anyone, you should I mean depends on the type okay. of girl. Okay. You no, know, if you want to date a city girl, you don't expect a city girl to do the to, house chores. No, to not even do the house chores to be a wife material. Okay. Right. <laughs> and you don't really, expect. Really. Uh, <laughs> A countryside girl to what to live up to your city girl expectation. So it's it's what you want. Find the balance. You have to find the balance. It's what you want. Is it easy to date? Uh, are in general Vietnamese girl open to like dating foreigners? Dating foreigners to say or open minded and just approach. In general, I won't. Though. I won't. I won't want to generalize, but. You would find some of them mm -hmm. that once they like you, they like you. Mm -hmm. And you will find some of them, if they, don't, if they don't like you, there is nothing you can so do. So you would say Vietnamese girls are definitely outgoing. Um, like you can, you can reach out to them without like, you know... Uh, yeah, but alone. first, you have to put this at the back of your mind. You have to, because most of them, because you speak English, yeah. and if you can't speak Vietnamese, how would you reach out to them? Yeah, that's that's... That's the first, trouble. yeah. If you can speak Vietnamese... Are you, uh, you speak Vietnamese, though? Yeah, I do. How would you rate yourself out of, like, ten? Well, people say I'm like a six, but like I would say I'm, I'm still a one, 1.5. Yeah, that's, that's like uh, a good quality of a down-to-earth person. I would still give you five, bro. But tell me, um, how long did it take you to get to five or six? Well, I've been... Uh, it's taken me what seven years. Mm. And you? <laughs> but no, I just started studying intensively. I mean, really putting in an effort, like uh, three years ago. Okay. And how long would you say a person can start talking? Me. Just general things. There are only. I mean, some people understand my Vietnamese. My in-laws, my wife's parents, understand when I speak Vietnamese. My wife understands when I speak Vietnamese. I understand when I speak Vietnamese, okay. but some Vietnamese don't understand when I speak Vietnamese. Okay. Can, can you speak uh, like a word about, uh, say, India in Vietnamese? India. Um, 
I you remember, uh, do you know who is the Prime Minister? No. no. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's say generalize or just, just give you a notion about what you know about, in, about India in Vietnamese, if you can. Um, Vietnamese people. Người uh, ăn đồ có cháu á. Uh, I think I said it wrong. What is Asia in Vietnam? I don't know. It's cháu á. Uh, I think I'm right though. So I, I just said I'm India is in Ch China, uh, Asia. Asia. Right draw. What else? <laughs> Man, if you cross, if you fact check this, and I've said something wrong in Vietnam. I don't know. We are not going to fact check. It's just, just we talking, and I don't know what we talked. In case you guys like the video, do give it a thumbs up and uh, like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe, and we'll see you. Maybe in the next uh, next video, maybe next chit chat somewhere else. Right. So what we say? Ram Ram Ji. Film milte hain. Film mein kya? Hariyo. Hariyo.